Good morning, everybody. This is Joe Jurek. Today I'm coming live from San Francisco, California. I'm on the rock, Alcatraz. It was a fabulous trip here in San Francisco doing the boots on the ground. I took an extra day and I decided to uh, explore the rock, Alcatraz, in the middle of the bay. But the one thing I want to tell you about is something I encounter a lot when I teach students is they're looking through listings and they don't know how to find the most motivated sellers. When you're out there trying to make a lot of offers to get a real estate deal, you're looking at making 25 offers and getting one accepted. But the problem is sometimes it's how you make the offers. You randomly just don't make 25 offers by offering like 40 or 50 percent of the asking price. What you have to do is go ahead and try to find the most motivated sellers. Who are those sellers? The people that have to sell, not just the people that want to sell. There's a huge difference between needing to sell, having to sell, and well, I'd like to sell. So when you're looking through listing, you're looking for the different tells, as I call it. How do you know what a motivated seller might be? It could be that the property is vacant. That's very good. If a vacant property, because they have expenses, insurance, taxes, upkeep, things of that nature, property management. It could also be that they've had multiple price reductions. Maybe the property's been on the market for two or three months and they've already had four or five price reductions. When I was doing a boots on the ground last year in Hawaii, I saw properties on the market over 900 days with no price reductions. They weren't motivated sellers, they were just stubborn. They weren't gonna sell until they got their price. So a lot of times you're looking for motivated sellers that make multiple price reductions. The funny thing was, while I was here on the boots on the ground, we had saw a house on the market only 18 days, and it was in Oakland, California, right across the bay. The funny thing is, it was listed at $249,000, and 18 days later, they dropped it to $199. They made a $50,000 price drop in less than three weeks. Were they motivated? I think so. We went through that house and I told the students that they should probably make an offer on it if they had a good exit strategy of what they were gonna do with the home if they got it at the right price. So sometimes when you're looking through listings, bank own, foreclosure, REO, all the same thing, vacant properties. When we look at it, people have made multiple price reductions. And then we're looking for motivational words like probate, estate sale. The other thing that we're looking for when we're talking about this is properties in as-is condition, okay, needs repair, handyman special, diamond in the rough. Any of those particular buzzwords that you might see in the ad could indicate that there's motivation. And that's the key because as you look for motivated sellers and as you make an offer, if you find the most motivated sellers, who knows what they're gonna take for a property unless you make that offer. So the more things that you have within your particular uh, a listing as you're going through these, the better the property might be. And often when I'm sorting through the listings, I'm looking at listings that I definitely want to follow up on. I put that into one pile, my definite pile. The other pile that I have is the maybe pile. It has some things that interest me, but I'm not sure if I'm going to make an offer on it. And the third pile is the pile that I know I'm not interested in. The house has been totally rehabbed on the market three days. The person still lives there. It's an owner occupant. I don't want that type of property. So I'm really looking for a property that tells me that there's certain motivation. Another tell that I like looking for is a property that is back on the market. It'll say BOM or back on the market. A property deal will fall through for one of two reasons normally. One, the person couldn't qualify for financing, or two, they usually back out due to a reason of an inspection or something else that comes up. The seller already is motivated because of the fact that in their mind they might have already spent the money. Now the property is back on the market. This is especially true, I believe, for bank-owned properties, for Fannie Mae Home Path, for Freddie Mac Home Steps. Once deals fall through, they get motivated and sometimes they'll go ahead and list the property back on the market. The other thing that I'm looking at too when I'm reviewing all the listings is I'm talking about doing other things such as looking at bank owned properties that have uh, come up for a review every 30, 60, 90, 120 days. After 30, 60, 90, 120 days, every 30 days they're doing what's called a BPO, a broker price opinion. At that point, they're making an adjustment on the property to go ahead and potentially lower it based on the broker's price opinion. 
The other thing that I'm looking at is if I'm approaching that 60, 90, 120 days, meaning it's on the market for 48 days, uh, I, I'm guessing they're going to do a broker price opinion and possibly have another adjustment coming down. So that's an excellent time to make an offer. So when you're reviewing listings that your realtor sends you or what the type, type of criteria is you tell them, look for more of these tell items as to uh, indications of possible motivation. If you find the most motivated sellers, if you make 25 offers, you're bound to get at least one deal. Well, until next time, have a great day. Believe and achieve. Take care.